Chapter 29 Racing Apotheosis Once upon a time, in the magical land of Equestria, there were two regal sisters who ruled together and created harmony for all the land. To do this, the eldest used her unicorn powers to raise the sun at dawn. The younger brought out the moon to begin the night. Fuck. You know what irony is? I recognized the voice of Scootaloo, even though it was raspy, even though all her coughing and the mad clicking and the roar of the wind around her. Irony is that it feels I spent my whole damn childhood trying to get my cutie mark, and I don't have it anymore. Irony is that I spent most of the last decade working to save Equestria from a mega spell end of the world. Scootaloo's voice cracked followed by a barrage of wet, raspy coughs. Then it happened, and I wasn't even fucking here. My whole damn wing is a stupid damn accident while practicing a routine for them damn gallops. By the time I got out of the Hanoverian Pegasus Clinic, it was all over. Irony is that I'm the one who made Sweetie Belle the Overmare Stable too, and I was beginning to worry about her. Now, she's probably the only one of us who has survived. I... The recording was interrupted by another fit of coughs. Apple Bloom was supposed to be in Philadelphia. I can't even get near that place. A pony would die from the radiation in minutes. I actually considered banging a hoof on Stable 2's door. But then I saw all the bodies. Sweetie Belle did right. Didn't open the door for any pony. Can't let this poison in. Contaminate the whole stable. If I knocked, Sweetie Belle might just open the door for me. And I can't let that happen. Fuck. I'm giving him my pip buck. Leaving it here with this message. I figure, if Alpha Bloom survived, She'll come looking here. If not, some pony else will. Besides, I'm sick of it clicking. I don't need it yelling at me that all the snow is radioactive and that I'm breathing poison. The air is fucking green. More coughing. Except for those weird pink swirls coming off Canterlot. Why don't you see the air? You know it's bad. This time, the coughing fit lasted minutes. Fuck. That's blood. That's so not good. They kept telling us the cloud curtain was for our own protection, keeping the radiation and mega spell pollution from getting into Pegasi cities. Who knew if they were telling the truth? Fucker said the brand is to mark me as Sunpony, who's been below, contaminated. Now I know that's horse apples. Told them. Told him I was proud of what Rainbow Dash did. Called myself a Dashite. Boy, that got their feathers in a bunch. Irony is, I worked really hard to find a better way. Some kind of society, or government, or something that would be better. Wouldn't make the same damn mistakes that killed every pony. And I get trapped up there with a whole slew of ponies who seemed dedicated to finding the worst way ever. Even I wouldn't have tried an experiment like the Enclave. The stables aren't set up to fail. Hell, I give the Enclave a few months, at most. Scootaloo's voice stopped, but no cough this time, just harsh breathing. After a moment, she continued. If you find this, before I'm gone, she was cut off by an explosive cough, then by several moments of silence, then a groan. If you find this, there's a shack marked on it. I traced Rainbow Dash to there. I think she's living there, or was recently. Wasn't there when I looked, but I'm heading back, going to wait there. I hope she returns.
I should be there for her. Like she is with me. Some pony should be there. Scootaloo coughed one final time. I just want Dash to know. We didn't all. She's not alone. I reverently placed the battered old pit buck back into the Rock of Destiny, where it has rested for nearly two centuries. The pit buck was the first Dash I ate. Lay once again with the discarded treasures of Dashites to follow. All except for Calamity, those relinquished possessions of his old life we had come to reclaim. At Calamity's hooves lay the black carapace of Enclave armor, the tips of the built-in magical energy rifles flickering with a wicked light. She don't rightly belong to me, I reckon, Calamity said. They belong to Captain, Captain Deadshot Calamity of the Royal Grand Pegasus Enclave. And he ain't round no more. But, after seeing Velvet put on that zebra suit, I figure it might stubborn and foolish of me to not at least drag her out and carry her around with us. In case things get bad enough, I can put her on. Clemity looked up at us, face reddened under his rust-colored coat. You know, since we've had to repack everything anyway. I nodded, remembering the overturned Sky Bandit and the swath of scattered possessions. So, my buck was a captain, Velvet Remedy purred, wrapping the Enclave armor with her magic and floating it off the ground. My buck? I felt the strings of a chuckle. I'd been sure that Calamity would end up being Velvet Remedy's Calamity, not the other way around. But the mayor certainly wasted no time. I smiled at the both of them. This was good. The whole world was filled with so much bad. My friends needed some good, and I was glad they could find it in each other. I thought of homage and was thankful to her. Without homage, I'm not sure my heart could have been so generous. Calamity stammered, blushing harder. Do you want to talk about it? Velvet asked gently, rubbing her head soothingly, yet coaxingly, against Calamity's neck as she floated the creepy black carapace to their side. Uh, well, she's got quad Nova Surge rifles. My own design. That's not what I meant. Clemmy stirred away. I know. He turned back to her. Really, there ain't much to tell. They made me a captain. And with the promotion came new duties. I was assigned to lead a wing of scouts down below the cloud curtain. He saw my surprise and explained. The Enclave ain't stupid. They've been sending scouts down here just about twice a year to get the lay of things for ages. Then they play out the reports telling civilian ponies that the world down here ain't ready for us yet, and the air ain't breathable. Keeps every pony happy to just fritter away with their lives above. Only, that ain't actually how it was down here. Ain't been for a long time. And when I saw that, well, I kind of made waves. Then in my third patrol, I saw a bunch of raiders hitting a caravan. I knew it was coming. Your policy? Yep. Ordered my wing to take the raiders out. They refused. So afterwards, I had them locked up for insubordination. Higher ups took kind unkindly to that. Told me I was giving me one more chance to correct the path I was on, or they would be held to pay. Calamity snorted and dug at the ground with a hoof. They put me in front of assembly to address of every pony and tell them how there ain't nothing down here to save yet. Show them just how much I was hitching the party wagon. Velvet Remedy backed up and looked Calamity over. Well, that was foolish of them. But yep, Calamity's muzzle broke into a grin. I reckon it had been so long since some pony had bucked the Enclave that they forgot it could happen. I stood right up there 
and told everypony that they need to, we needed to go down there right now. He paused. Well, then... You know what I mean. Anyway, I told them I was leaving, and that they were free to follow. Clamity lifted a hoof and scratched his mane under his hat. Didn't hear about how I supposedly killed my own wing till about six months later. I remember what Calamity said back in Philadelphia. Most dictatorships, I know, to tend to give a hell and high water to either discredit or destroy opposing forces like that. I trotted over and wrapped a foreleg around Calamity in a hug, which I note was a little tricky since he was a fair bit taller than me. Thanks, little pip. Something occurred to me. So, I asked Calamity, as I dropped back to all four hooves. Most of the Pegasi don't realize what's going on down here. They ain't bad ponies, little pip, Calamity whined. They're just being bamboozled by the leaders. Even in the best governments, the ponies at the top don't tell the rank and file what's actually going on. He trotted in place. You think better folk a new Appaloosa? Have any idea just how connected they are to Red Eye? I remember the way the ponies in Turnpike Tavern laughed at the notion of that buck with the sprite bots being any pony's leader. On the other side of the bottle cap, I was willing to bet that Sweetie Belle didn't tell any pony in Stable 2 about the friends and relatives dying outside the stable door, breaking their hooves against it as they begged to be let in. Hell, I was supposed to be the leaders of these ponies, and I was keeping secrets of my own. The truth about the Ministry of Peace and the mega spells came swiftly to mind. So I suppose that Calamity's assertion was true. Lil Pip, if most of the ponies up there saw for themselves what's going on down here, they'd buck the damn enclave and pony up to help. Calamity's confidence faltered. Well, most being at least more than half, I reckon. I felt an odd tug at one of my saddlebags. I turned to see Velvet Remedy's pit buck float out, enveloped by Velvet Remedy's magic. I watched the polished pit buck, with its custom engravings of Velvet's singing nightingale, glide across the air, and gently set itself down on the rock of destiny next to Scootaloos. I hope it's not presumptuous, she said to Calamity, sounding slightly apprehensive. I'm not a Dashite but I'm leaving an old life behind, and it feels wrong to be taking something out without putting something else in its place. Thank you kindly, Calamity responded, approving. I brought up my inventory sorted on my pit buck, scrolling through it until I realized with a pang that I didn't have anything from my life in the stable to give up. I stared forlornly at the Rock of Destiny, feeling like I was failing somehow. I already left everything in the stable too behind. I probably would have sealed a picture of my mother up inside the rock, but I didn't even have that. No. I did have something. Biting my lower lip, I pulled up the recipe for party time mint dolls. I would give this up, but I didn't want anybody else to suffer from them as I had. The first night outside, I discovered a message from Apple Bloom to Sweetie Belle which had a very special encryption. I used that now as I sent the recipe to Velvet Remedy's pit buck. No pony would be able to read the recipe without downloading it from both her pit buck and mine. I erased the recipe from my pit buck. Somehow, it was both liberating and frightening. Stable 2. I was leaving it again. This time, hurt worse. Probably, because I knew that I, that I would never return, even though I could. I felt weary beyond simple exhaustion. The mental toll of the night before was compounding the physical exertion of the battle, and of nearly dying once again. I stared at Calamity, who somehow managed to seem almost normal, despite nodding, not having gone through the same as me, but had been up for a full day much of which was spent dragging the Sky Bandit. Almost normal. 
He had been ruthless, I was told, in hunting down the last of the Steel Rangers. I do not begrudge him for that. But this had been more of his code, more of his policy. We were closest friends, and he'd taken the assault on our former home personally. Then again, with the exception of Zenith and Pyrelite, we all did. For our own reasons. Calamity? I asked, as I floated the sky banded up off the ground. When we first met, and you told me that you didn't live in New Appaloosa, you said you had a little shack. I had a suspicion. Calamity landed on it, and trotted in place. Now weightless, the passenger wagon rolled easily under his hooves, until he had it upright. Yep, he replied. And to answer the question, yep to that too. I got the marker off the first dash shite's pit buck by linking to it with my armor, just before giving it up. Did Rainbow Dash ever return to the shack? I mean, do you know? I don't reckon she did, Calamity stated, his words sending a wave of bitter sadness through my heart. When I got there, I found a Pegasus skeleton curled up in a corner, which I buried out back. Figure if Rainbow Dash had come back, there would have been two. Another pang shut through my heart. Calamity had done better for Scootaloo than I had for any pony who had passed on. I felt a steely resolve build within my sorrow. Before we go, we should bury the skeletons in the Apple Cellar Tunnel, I said firmly. I know we're on the clock, but damn it, if I'm going to leave here again without doing that. Calamity nodded, just like I knew he would. Though Dumbly tried it closer, levitating another pile of scavenged goods. This would be so much easier if I had a find our stuff spell. You know, if we're taking all these detours, maybe we ought to swing by my old place, Calamity suggested. I can gather up a few tools. And little Pip could have a crack at the floor safe, no ponies being able to open. There was a twinkle in his eye when he said that. I heard Velvet stifle a snicker. I face hoofed. Oh, now that's just not playing fair. The cleanup and the Rock of Destiny had already eaten the first hours of daylight, and the burials would take some more time. We'd be lucky to make Fetlock by sundown. But then, the floor safe. A floor safe in a shack that both Apple Dad, or Rainbow Dash and Scootaloo had once called home. If extremely briefly, no less. The curious little pony in my mind was prancing around eagerly, suggesting all sorts of impossible, important, or interesting things that might be inside. I shot Calamity a look. You think you can use my weakness against me that easily? Yep. I hoof stomped. Okay, yes you can. But just this once. Uh, yep, sure. Ultimately, the burials added less than an hour to our departure time. Stu's ass casts weren't all painted and ready to leave until halfway through the effort. I'm glad you're finally with us. A paladin buck named Bitter Bright told Steel Hooves as they finally began to march into the Sky Bandit. It should have been sooner, Steel Hooves stated grimly. I should have done this when there was a chance for a peaceful break. This will be a civil war, and a bloody one. Paladin Bitter Bright nodded. Star Paladin Crossroads has already locked Elder Cottage Cheese's communications down and send out warnings to those and the other contingents who would follow us. With any luck, they'll be able to slip away before word of what happened here reaches the other elders. I swallowed. What happens then? Paladin Bitterbright neighed. If we had done this years ago, with an elder taking the lead, then those who believed 
the Steel Rangers should be following the Ministry Mayor and helping the ponies of Equestria could simply have transformed to the new Elder's contingent. We would have been looked upon poorly, but the voice of an Elder is law. Now, the Steel Ranger outcast took a moment of silence before continuing. Now we are succeeding. We are traitors and mutineers. Once the Elder learns of this, any within their ranks who empathize with us will be exterminated. Oh, Celestia grant mercy. Hopefully, Sue has added, those who would join us can make it out before then. They'll be galloping towards Stable 29. We will need to have it secured by then, or they will be galloping into a trap. Well, except for Trottingham, Knight Strawberry Lemonade piped up, joining the conversation as she moved to stand uncomfortably close to Steel Hoops. My friend looked around, as if searching for some trivial task to give her. In Trottingham, there are more of us than there are of them. In Trottingham, I bet the Elder will be the one abandoning ship. The pony in my head whimpered, watching my actions ripple into a war and bloodshed. I'm so sorry. For what? Paladin Bitterbright added. None of this is your fault, or your doing. Except that because you and your friends, this squad isn't dead at Nova Rage's hoof, or still trapped inside the school's of the stable school, waiting to die of thirst and starvation. He nickered. This battle started the moment Nova Rage killed one of us and locked away the others. And that happened hours before any of you showed up. This is on her. And on us. Hell, we should be apologizing to you for not saying enough until after the others started slaughtering the poor pony folk in the Ministry Mayor's stable. It's on me. Sudo said finally. This has always been on me. As he plodded past me, he lowered his helmet and whispered into my ear, It's better that my child never knew me.